fans and welcome to another episode of the Hambini Show. This one was... <laughs> my Instagram has gone completely wild and mental over some bike that has been released by a company called Ribble Cycles. And um, I'm going to talk you through some of the... well, what I think of it, really. Right, all PowerPoint today with a bit of wankatering thrown in. Let's start from the first slide. Right. Ribble Ultra Wanketeering Orange Nip. Jesus, that isn't a pen, is it? That's a freaking knife. Um, Wanketeering or Engineering a five year old reacts. By Hambini, aged five. Disclaimer I'm five, let's move on. Right, is the freaking pen working? This is the bike in question. It is made by a company called Ribble. They are quite a large um, mail order company in the UK. I looked them up on Company's House and they are part of another company called, I think it was Cycle Sport North. Turnover, circa 20 million quid, something like that. I think it was 18 maybe. And this is their bike. So they have released this, put it on the usual uh, media outlets, um, especially the UK ones, bragging about how aerodynamic it is and all of this. Well, my Instagram went absolutely ballistic going, is this bullshit or not? There were so many that, you know, I have to give the people what they want and this is it. I even conducted a straw poll on the community site to see how many people thought this was going to be the hairdresser or a speck of shite on the Ains of Humanity. So anyway, this is the bike. Now, there's some you know, let's look about the overall things of the bikes. So there's, there's small clearance between the um, front wheel, front tyre and the down tube. So that's good. Also small clearance around the rear tyre and the seat tube. Um, the drop rear stays. Now, there's a bit of contention over whether that's aerodynamic or not. I mean, at, at the speeds that most people travel at, who knows. Um, and then there's some bits that aren't so good. Oh, and the, the, well, actually, let's, let's not forget about the other bit that's good is the fork. So the fork depth is quite deep. So deeper is generally faster, and so is the head tube. So the head tube is quite long. Um, what you want is when airflow hits an object, you want the the adverse pressure side. So that's from this plow point onwards to be as long as possible and then the airflow will um, will reconverge nice and smoothly so that's that's what you aim for um, right some of the things that are a bit I don't know in your face on this bike are the handlebars now the handlebars might not be easy to see on the monitor so I'll draw a profile or oh, a red line around it jeez look at that that is the handlebars. So it's one piece and you've got this huge bulge around here and another one around here. Now the way they are supposed to work, looking at the um, stuff that they've blurted out, is through combined CD. So <laughs> what I've done here is I've tried to depict how this works. So normally if you have like an aerofoil shape, CD maybe 0.03. A round ball which replicates the um, guy's uh, leg so you know if you cut it in section CD 1.2 the bottom one is more like a bull bullet it's a semi bluff no it's not really a semi bluff body it's a, a cone shape and this is more akin to what you have on those handlebars so the handlebars the front part of the handlebar is quite pointy, but the back surface is is not. So what you're trying to get is you are trying to generate a wake round here. So the ball, sorry, the, the guy's leg ends up in an area which has very, very low velocity. Now the thing with this is if you, you it's a combined CD, so the combined CD of the streamline handlebars and the guy's leg is maybe 1.15. OK, 
combined CD of the weight handlebars with the guy's leg is 1.3. So you might think, well, this is actually better. And that's because aerodynamic purists will always go for this method. And there's a straight, straight easy reason. The guy's legs are going to be moving, so he's going to have um, a downstroke where the, his leg is like, I don't know, 60, 70 centimetres away from the handlebars, and then the upstroke where his leg is quite close to the handlebars, so you have that movement. It is impossible for them to have engineered for every person's leg and every position of those handlebars. So based on that, the purists will always go for this method. Okay, so that's that's the principle of how it works. There are a few other critical things. This gap. So if you make the gap smaller, yeah, then the CD improves. And the reason is because it, you, you are trying to reduce what's known as leakage. If you have an object here and an object here, you've got all of this region for leakage. If the gap is very small, like it's shown here, you haven't got, I mean, the t leakage path around there is quite tortuous, so you don't really have that. So that's how that works. So what they're trying to do is make the handlebars disturb the air so that your legs fit in them. Now, this is you know quite commonly used in the real world. Here's a bloke on his bike tailing a truck. Now, the thing with this is, I'm sure everyone's done it, usually with tractors, because I'm not fast enough to tail a truck. The closer you get to the tractor in front, the more likely you like you are to crash into the back of it, but also the bigger the reduction in drag. And if you get towards the edge of here and here, you'll get buffeting. So you know you don't you don't want to do that because it becomes unstable. So the, the other uh, parameter that's quite important is the size of the two objects. The the the, the um, handlebars are tiny in comparison to the um, guy's leg. So, you know, I think it's bullshit, personally. There you go. Right. I've seen, said most of this. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, fucking hell. And the downstream has variable geometry, so you could have, you yeah, know, tall, short, middle-aged, fat, twat, seat, for being in a very variable position, all of that. Read it. Right, next one. The fe key feature, the flared down tube. So this is the only other real thing that's like in your face on this bike. Um, before we go any further, I've zoomed in on here and let me highlight some things to you. So this is a water bottle holder bolt. So that is M5 thread. And typically that's eight and a half millimeter on a cap head screw. So their cap head look like hex head screws. Whether it's ISO or DIN, don't really matter. And then look at this. <laughs> look at the void. <laughs> the publicity shot with a void there. You can quite clearly see the void. <laughs> Absolutely outrageous. And also there's, there's something happening here and um, just the general surface on there. I mean, God. If you're doing a publicity shot, you don't really want that. Anyway. There are like some good features on here, so let's let's be uh, honest. The uh, section of the tube is box section, so a box section is, is quite stiff. Um, this flat section here, around the bottom bracket area, again, is a good thing because it makes the thing stiffer, more rigid. Um, I mean, the, I mean, the other thing is, I mean, what if you've got a water bottle that's like that big? <laughs> Some of those aero water bottles are that big. But we'll come on to that in a minute. Right. The aerodynamics of this is... The CFD is totally questionable. Um, I don't use those words lightly. It, looking at it, it is a bit of a bit of a hodgepodge. Right, let's, let's show you. Oh, this is their website, by the way. Um, so you can get the bike in various builds. Uh, right, let's see which one it is. Right, if you play this... The performance advantages have been proven consistent. The, the guy's not pedaling, you see? <laughs> the, the guy's not pedaling, and if I just go back to 
this. Um, I mean, Christ, look at that. Look at that gap. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, now what I said before about having gaps, aero road bikes, what you want is you want the, um, you want this gap to be nothing like this. Okay, and obviously if you've got different water bottles, um, you're going to get a different amount of, of drag. But, I mean, that is heaps better than that. Now, if they're going to say that that is, you know, more aerodynamic, it's probably it's going to be more aerodynamic than not having a water bottle. Don't dispute that. But you've got so many variables in there, like the height of the water bottle and the size of the frame. And, I mean, the, the trek here with its... Um, water bottle is like a factor of 10 better. Now, we come on to this. Now this really was a bit of a, I don't, can't believe the guy said it right. So what they've claimed is a 70 second saving against a Ribble Endurance. Now, just to give a bit of history, and I don't know if this is totally true, but I was looking through the um, usual shitsters and they were saying that the Ribble Endurance was an open mold frame, they just bought it from some place in the Far East, slapped their name on it and then sold it off. And uh, the guy from Ribble was saying that um, he's got a, a 70 second advantage, so let's show you that. Let's show him, where is it? I mean someone's got to watch Road CC videos, haven't they? God. God, the things I have to in do real world conditions, what we're averaging is we're averaging at the 22 miles an hour uh, speed that you're going to see approximately 70 to 80 second gain over a 40 uh, kilometer loop versus our uh, benchmark bike, which is already very much aerodynamically optimized, very fast, race proven, race winning bike that our race teams are riding on. Now, one of the things I hate about people is when they use mixture of units. So they've used 29 or 22 miles an hour and 40 kilometers for a time trial, you know, just unification of units. He's in the UK, they signed up to go metric in 1970 something, 79. Uh, but anyway, right, this is, I mean, the, the claim, 70 seconds, is a long time. So let's have a look through down here. All of this stuff, so 70 seconds in the sweet spot. I mean, who uses your angle these days? It's a waste of time, absolute waste of time. No one uses it because wind does not hit you at three degrees for a minute and then five degrees for another 30 seconds and then um, you know, 10 degrees for another 10 minutes. It's just bollocks, it's constantly moving. Anyway, so 61.4 seconds quicker at 29 miles an hour. That is the headline figure. Um, but if you actually read a bit more into this, that isn't particularly difficult because if you look at the bike that he was comparing it to, it is this one. So let's just pick the fastest one in there, most expensive. Is it this one? I suppose it doesn't really matter, does it? The frame's all the same. Look at that! <laughs> I mean, first of all, the wheels aren't as deep. Look at the massive gaps. Absolutely ridiculous, massive gaps. It's not going to be hard to be um, uh, faster than that thing, is it? <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, right. Let's go on to the next slide. CFD. I mean, the CFD is quite troubling, really, because it doesn't appear to be anything more than a marketing aid. And now I've just ripped it to pieces and given justification for it. So there's no pedaling action. I mean, you can look at it. It's a perfect f fit for no pedaling. Um, there's no spokes on the wheels. There doesn't appear to be any spokes on the wheels. And the disturbance in the CFD modeling doesn't show any. All the stuff they've shown in, in their marketing blurbage is with the uh, wind dead on. Um, dead on, zero degrees. No at your angle whatsoever. Um, the nature number, basically zero. I'm going to give you an A plus in wanketeering and fantastic downhill analysis for not being able to pedal. Right, overall, the gain from the handlebars 
will be tiny compared to the loss from the rider position. So if you're just buying these handlebars and you've screwed your rider position up, that loss will be massive. It'll be absolutely massive. It will completely eradicate it. You don't have that many options, certainly to rotate the handlebars, the reach and drop are governed by whatever they give you. The likelihood is they're not going to have a combination for every rider. It'll probably be 10 or 15% will be able to fit. I mean, everyone will be able to ride the bike, but the optimized position, um, based on the ones I give you, will probably be 10 or 15%. And the bottle cage aerodynamics. Do I really need to talk about that? <sighs> I've said about this before. And then the, oh, the boundary conditions in the CFD are absolutely fucking disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. There's. It's completely unrepresentative of the real world. So, I don't, know, I don't really know what they were thinking. <clears throat> right, questions, comments. Have I been too hard or too soft? You can decide below. Um, you know, what do you think? Rather than the um, mediated or moderated, or let's call it censored comments that you get on the bottom of the other videos, um, you can say what you like on here. Remember to hit subscribe, comment, and lick me on Instagram. And as always, keep banging your hairdressers.